Hi, this is Nick from Tilta. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to set up and use the Kronos ecosystem for iPhone. To start, we've already secured the cage around our smartphone via the four screws in each corner. We also have an Arca plate attached to the tripod just for demonstration purposes. We'll go into further detail about how those accessories connect in just a bit. So the two main things to know about the cage itself is that you have seven pairs of mounting points around the sides of the cage. And you do just have to keep in mind that these bottom two would be one single mounting point, while these top two are a second mounting point, meaning you can attach accessories via these two, but not the two in the middle as those are not their own dedicated mounting point. There's also most of the points on the cage have electronic contact points, which will pass power through when using power sources or accessories that require power. Again, we'll go a bit more in depth on that in just a little bit. The only other thing to know about the cage itself is that it does include a MagSafe card holder, which can hold one card and kind of snaps into place on the back of the phone. Next, we're going to take a look at some side handle options for the Kronos, as well as look further into how the connection point for all accessories works. So to start, I have the small wooden handle, and as you can see on the inside, our main connection point is comprised of these small metal tabs, and if I press this button in, it is going to retract the tabs, and they're going to engage. Now we can then clip this into any of the mounting points on the cage, keeping in mind that the cage does have a lip, meaning if I am trying to connect this on the wrong orientation, it's just not going to press in. An easy way to tell is that if the accessory has a lever, it should be facing you, as you will need that to lock into position, and you can see the lip on the handle itself kind of easily lines up with the cage. And once that's pressed in, those prongs have kind of grabbed into the cage, and it does have a little bit of play, but it is secure. You can further secure that by pressing down on that lever. Another example of one of the handles we have is the same wooden handle but attached to a small NATO bracket. Exact same connection type. We're going to press down on that button, make sure that these pins are in their open position, and then we're just going to press down on a mounting point. The release button should pop up, and then locking down that lever should give us a secure connection. With a handle like this, we also have an adjustable angle for the handle, just to provide the most kind of comfortable operating as well as a NATO rail you can use to attach accessories possibly like the Nano 2 or any other accessory that connects via NATO. With our third option we have one of the more universal handles. This can be used as a side handle or as we're going to set it up right now as a top handle. So just press that in the lever and then you have a small button on the side that is going to allow you to adjust the rotation of this as well as adjust for the center of gravity. So this will be great as I mentioned, as a side handle or a top handle, and it'll help you kind of disperse the weight of a, or the balance of your phone. Next, we're going to be taking a look at the focus handle, which is going to provide power to both the case and the phone, as well as giving you some options for controlling zoom and focus in the Blackmagic app. So to start, we're going to connect the USB-C cable to the phone, which will send power. And the same connection type as all the other accessories, including electronic contact points for powering the case. So we're going to kind of press that in the side port, make sure both of those prongs have kind of connected, and then secure the lever. From there, we can power on the handle by holding down the record button. It should show us a battery indicator life, letting us know how charged the handle is and then it'll quickly return to its mode setting display, which will show red for black magic control, or if we double tap the function button right here, we can change it to green for native iPhone camera app control. We'll keep that on red for now. We also have a USB-C port, which is just for power and can be used for charging the phone, as well as a 3.5 millimeter mic jack, which can be used for external audio. In order to pair to the Blackmagic app, it's a pretty simple process. All you need to do is make sure Bluetooth is enabled on the phone. Go into Settings, and under the Accessories page, you have an option for Bluetooth accessories and the Nucleus series. All you got to do is select the name of the handle, return to the camera app, and you should have Focus Control. With a single tap function button, Zoom Control. If you want to use this in the native camera app, it's a fairly similar process to pairing other Bluetooth devices. 
I'm going to double tap function, make sure the LED on the top is green. Then we're going to navigate to our settings page and in the Bluetooth menu, we're going to select the name of the handle, the same we would any other Bluetooth device. Select pair. We can now go into the camera app and we do not have focus or zoom control, but we can use the record button as a shutter when taking photos, as well as an actual record button when taking video. Keep in mind, if you are pairing this handle with multiple phones, you may need to clear the paired list, uh, which you can do so by triple pressing the function button. The handle should flash red and green. Uh, you can also control if you want to send power or not through the USB-C cable by holding the function button. This can be helpful if you are just trying to power accessories, just trying to control the app, or if you do need to, in fact, power the phone with the handle. Next, we're going to look at the USB-C hub, which we're going to connect to our tripod via the ARCA plate on the bottom. However, you do still have a quarter 20 thread with locating points if you need to connect this to a different system. Once that's secure, we're going to connect this the same way that we would any other accessory. We're going to line up two mounting points on the bottom, make sure that button is pressed in, and we're going to find the groove of the hub and just kind of press that down. The button should pop out and we can lock that in place to further secure it. Next, we'll connect our USB-C cable from the four iPhone USB-C port into the USB-C port on the phone itself. So from here, we're gonna have a few different IO options. The first one being a PD USB-C port. It's gonna be perfect for sending external power to the phone, as well as two USB-C ports you can use for additional accessories or for sending data out to an external hard drive. Also have an HDMI port, meaning you can send video out for an external monitor, as well as a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack port for external audio. So this setup is fully usable as it's displayed. However, you may notice that many of the kits do come with the focus handle, and you may be wondering how you can use the focus handle with the hub, given that the USB-C port is being used. You essentially have two options, the first one being using the groove of the focus handle to wrap around the cable of the USB-C hub, locking that into place, and then just kind of letting this cable dangle. Essentially, this is almost fully functional as you're still sending power throughout the cage for any accessories, and you're still controlling the Blackmagic app through Bluetooth. The only thing that's not happening in this setup is power is not being sent from the handle to the phone. If you did want to set that up, what that would look like is you would unplug the USB-C hub, disconnect the phone, and then from there, we can rotate the USB-C hub and then lock it into place with the same connection. So find the groove, press down, and then lock into place. Now, from here, we do want to reconnect that same cable from the phone into the four iPhone port of the hub, but now the shorter cable or the handle has better clearance for the PD power. So to recap, you are still connecting the hub into the phone. So you have all of your IO ports, but the handle is now providing PD power into the hub, which is sending power into the phone. So this would be the kind of most complete setup for using both the focus handle with the USB-C hub. Next up is the cooling module, which is going to connect to the phone via MagSafe. It also can pull power from the case itself via the contact pins on the bottom. We're going to just drop that into place and it should align. Assuming the case itself is powered via a power source like the focus handle, you can then charge the phone through MagSafe from the power running through the case, as well as activate the fans to provide additional cooling. If you are not using the focus handle or a source that powers the case itself, there's a USB-C port on the bottom for providing external power. Next is the mini LED light. This one is daylight balanced. This is gonna to connect to any of the mounting points and via the same process, keeping in mind you will need to use a point with an electronic contact. There also is a lip on the side of this, meaning it is only gonna mount in one orientation and may need to be flipped. So once we're connected, you can hold the power button at the top 
turn the light on and then single tap to select intensities. Keep in mind there is no internal battery in this accessory, so you will need a power source such as the side focus handle. Next, we're gonna take a look at some smaller accessories that we have for Kronos. First being this SSD holder. This is gonna connect just like any of the other ones, and it's gonna allow you to mount a variety of SSDs for external recording. We also have a couple of more traditional film mount style accessories, such as this cold shoe receiver. This will be great for mounting a small external monitor, maybe even a larger LED light, or possibly a more traditional video camera microphone. We also have one of our more universal pieces, which is a NATO rail, the quarter 20 with locating pins in the middle. This will be good if you're trying to rig the phone via an articulating arm on a kind of custom mount. It can also be used for mounting a variety of accessories. Also worth noting our Arca plate that we have on the bottom here connects the same way as any of the other accessories while also featuring a quarter 20 at the bottom. Next, we're gonna take a look at some of the filter and lens mount options we have for Kronos. So this would be an example of our filter tray holder, which is gonna snap into place over the lenses. And then further, click down the small tab in the middle. This is gonna be a great way to mount a variety of filters, such as the ND that I have here. This connects with a small magnet, just kind of snaps into place. This will allow you to shoot in bright outdoor environments without needing to rely on adjusting shutter speed to compensate for bright light. These filters can just kind of be removed as needed and then can be quickly taken off by releasing the tab and pulling the button on the top. We also have a variety of lens mount options, this being the Moment M mount, but we have options for the T-Series by Photogear as well as 17 millimeter threaded lenses. This is gonna snap into place the same way as our filter holders. It's gonna allow you to mount these lenses just by popping them in and twisting. This is a great way to get access to different focal lengths other than the ones included with the iPhone. That was the setup guide and overview for the Kronos ecosystem. I'm Nick from Tilta. Thanks for watching.